Welcome back guys. So back in late September of last year, I reviewed the Ein Loki Zero. I remember not being satisfied with it in terms of PC gaming, but when it comes to emulation, adding Jellos gave it a lot more value. It's not like me to end up loving a device after giving it a pretty f poor first impressions and then having a pretty neutral feeling on it afterwards. But after reading some of your comments and suggestions of what to do, after leaving this thing on my desk for several months, I decided I wanted to make an attempt to change my opinion. And I put Camaro OS on it. If you don't know what Camaro OS is, it's pretty much just Steam Big Picture in an OS. Their website says, Camaro OS is an operating system that provides an out-of-the-box couch gaming experience. After installation, boot directly into Steam Big Picture and start playing your favorite games. If you want Steam in your living room, you want Camaro OS. And I mean, they're not wrong. As I said, Camaro OS is for people who want to turn their old PCs, mini PCs, whatever you have, into a Steam gaming machine. One that mimics the Steam Deck and how it works because the Steam Deck pretty much just uses a glorified Steam Big Picture mode. It was kind of different than how Steam Big Picture was at the time of the Steam Deck's launch, but since then, Steam Big Picture has pretty much just morphed into the Steam OS. Steam Deck OS thing we see on the Steam Deck. The difference here is I'm putting it on my Loki Zero and I have zero plans on docking this thing. Maybe I would try to dock it if I made a freaking dock for it, but they didn't. The only reason I was considering putting this on here in the first place is one, because you guys suggested it to me in the comment section of my review, but two, four gigabytes of RAM is not enough to really play anything on Windows well. To a degree, I'm happy that the four gigabyte option for the Loki Zero is perpetually out of stock on their website, because like I said, Four gigabytes of RAM is not enough to really play anything, even through Steam Big Picture. I only bought this because I thought it would be cool to get a $200 Windows handheld and see what it can play, and now I know it really can't play anything. You might think that's an exaggeration, but just wait. It really isn't. So, I bet you're wondering, if Camaro OS is just Steam Big Picture, why not just use Steam Big Picture? Well, that's because Steam Big Picture is buggy and slow. Steam games that are literally the least powerful game you can find in the entire gaming sphere have trouble running at full speed. It's insanity. I will admit that this is a very unique issue to have, but I'm telling you all of this just so you know why I'm even doing this in the first place. Installing this was a pretty simple process. The Camaro OS website has a list of requirements that your device has to follow, the most important being that it has to have at least four gigabytes of RAM, and luckily I just made the mark. I'm using a 128 gigabyte SD card for this, so I passed the second one as well, and I didn't even read the other ones before installing. Realistically, you probably should, but they didn't have the text in bold on the website, so I didn't care. And it all worked out for me, so if you have a device that's more powerful than the Loki Zero, you should be fine. The download link for the image was below the installation guide, which was fairly vague, but descriptive enough that I could understand it. You have to use a software like Balena Etcher to flash the image file onto the SD card and then launch your device via the SD card. There are multiple ways to do it. If you're just using a like mini PC or something that you're connecting a keyboard and mouse to, you can just do some keyboard shortcuts. But because I'm using a handheld PC that has like no keyboard, physical, no physical keyboard, I had to follow this guy's comment where he gave me in the Logi Zero review a very easy way to boot into the recovery menu or BIOS menu. There are a few menus you have to navigate through and a few boxes you'll have to check off, but once you get through all of that, a setup menu will come up that looks exactly like the one you get when you set up a new Steam Deck. After the setup and sign in, you're pretty much done. Your Steam library is immediately accessible to you. Obviously, you'll have to download your games, but you're gonna have to do that on any device you get, so it's really not an issue. Unless you plan on streaming them, which I mean, that's up to you, but if you're gonna stream them, why install Camaro OS in the first place? But like I said earlier, if you've used a Steam Deck or the Steam Big Picture mode now that they've revamped it to look like the Steam Deck, this should all be very familiar to you. It's now time to discuss what I'm sure many of you have been wanting to hear about since the beginning of this video, video game performance and how it's changed putting Camaro OS on here. I have to be honest, I didn't play that many games on Windows before installing Camaro OS, but I have a good reason for it. Most of the games that, well, all of the games, all of the games I did play were indie, low end, kind of like the least powerful game you could find on Steam. Like not graphically intense at all, and yet most of them crashed on me or just 
did not run that well. Keep in mind that for all of the Windows games I did test, the TDP in the Loki control center was set to a full 20 watts, the highest that this thing can go, and a lot of these games didn't run well. So that should tell you something. But a perfect game example of the issues I faced is Stardew Valley. Now, I actually was kind of surprised that it ran even as well as it did when I played it on the Windows side, just because I remember it running not that well when I first got this thing. It wasn't always hitting a full 60 frames per second, which is crazy for a pixel art farming simulator, but I mean, it's better than it crashing like before it even boots. But it all came crashing down when I was leaving the fishing shop it crashed. I don't know why, and I was honestly really annoyed because I lost all my progress for that day, but I was more surprised that it even lasted that long. Nothing else worked even close to that well. Every other game I tried crashed within a few minutes of even being turned on. Sonic Mania and Curse to Golf were both victims of that, and I kept getting reminded that 4GB of RAM is not enough for a Windows handheld. I know you can upgrade it, I know people have, but I wanted to test it out just base base whatever stock like what how it comes but after putting camaro os on this all of these low-end games ran well stardew valley runs well curse to golf runs well sonic mania runs well an untitled goose game runs around 20 25 frames per second most of the time which weirdly is a frame rate that i'd consider playable especially for this device i was having a good time playing it obviously i have a million other devices I can play that game on, on so I'm not gonna be playing it on here for long play sessions, but I would consider that playable for this device at least. I've been playing a lot of Stardew Valley on my Loki Max recently, and I've been thinking about switching to my Loki Zero, but the aforementioned crashing and low performance just really deterred me from doing so. But now that this thing is actually a competent gaming machine, I've decided to start using it more, which is great because I did say that I wanted to see how what I could get out of a, out of a $200 Windows handheld with four gigabytes of RAM, but I also bought it because I wanted a device to play any games that was kind of smaller because I have a Steam Deck, I have a Loki Max. These both are big. The Loki Zero is technically the same size as the Loki Max, but in terms of weight and like thickness, it is definitely smaller. So having a device that I can kind of keep around just as an indie machine, I think is awesome. It's been getting better battery life because it doesn't have to run Windows and it's just a smoother experience overall. It's still kind of buggy, but comparing it to the before when it was using Steam Big Picture, which was, like I said, a buggy mess, I'd take this over that any day of the week. For a device that used to just collect dust on my desk, this thing has proven useful. Jealous was great for emulation, but I bought this thing for low-end PC gaming. If I wanted to do emulation, I would just use my Odin 2 or any of the other million retro handheld devices I own. If you're thinking about buying the Loki Zero or already own it, I would recommend putting Camaro OS on here, regardless of whether you have the 4GB or 8GB version. Obviously, if you have the 8GB version, Windows won't be as bad, but it just improves the experience so much that I think it'll be worth it. The installation process is so simple, so anyone will be able to figure it out regardless of technical prowess. So the question is, would I recommend this device more now that I've installed Camaro OS on it? Yes, but only if you're planning on playing like indie or low-end games. The four gigabyte model is likely permanently out of stock on Ein's website, but even if you're getting the eight gigabyte model or have the eight gigabyte model, you're not gonna get amazing performance out of Windows on there, so I would recommend it anyways. I've had a lot of success playing Stardew Valley on here, and I think this thing is probably gonna become my new indie machine because I pretty much own all of my indie games on Steam. If I had some on the Switch, I put them on here. I bought them on Steam as well. If you want something more powerful, look at the Loki Base or Max, and even if you buy those, I probably would recommend putting Camaro OS on there unless you want to use like so many different launchers, so many different emulators, just because it has such a nice UI and it's so easy to navigate and just use. So if you want to use Steam, if you pretty much only use Steam, this would probably be great for you, and I pretty much only use Steam on Windows for gaming aside from emulation. The only reason I haven't put Camaro OS on my Loki Max is because I want to have one PC device that I keep with Windows on it. Currently, my Loki Max is the only device that still runs Windows. My Loki Zero runs Camaro OS, pretty much Steam OS, and the Steam Deck runs SteamOS. It's always a weirdly hard question when I think about if I would recommend the Loki 
models or the Steam Deck to people. And that's because the low-key hardware, I think, is just so much more superior. I think the joysticks, the D-pad, all of that is just better. And using that powerful chipset, it just makes the low keys a way better device. But they run Windows, and that's no fun. SteamOS is so easy to navigate, so easy to use, but now that we have Camaro OS, if you get one of these more powerful devices that have better hardware and are more powerful, you can put Camaro OS on there and pretend you have a Steam Deck because it's pretty much the same experience. So yeah, I've kind of fallen in love with my Loki Zero after doing this. But what do you guys think? Does this make you more or less likely to buy a Loki model? Are you gonna try this out on something that isn't a Loki device like a ROG Ally or a Lenovo Legion Go? Do you wanna skip the hassle and just buy a Steam Deck? Cause I honestly don't blame you. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.